this really could apply to any animal with a terminal diagnosis, but you're going to hear me say geriatric or senior in here a lot. Today, I'm going to talk about traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. So some people yesterday were like, what's TCVM? That's traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. So if we leave the V out, TCM is traditional Chinese medicine for people. Um, so I want to, I've got a bunch of notes prepared, and I'm going to talk about the the um, syndromes that we see from that Chinese medicine standpoint and what we can do about them. We're going to talk a lot about food therapy today. Um, and then I've got a lot of different products that fit in um, and suggestions. And believe me, this is by no means an exhaustive list of things that you could use or try for your pets. Um, just giving you some examples. And for those of you who are not familiar with TCVM, uh, some of the terms that I'm going to use, you might be kind of like, huh, what? That doesn't make sense. I'll try to explain them as I go along um, <clears throat> to try to give you a little bit of explanation. And uh, so hopefully we can, you know, get you up to speed a little bit on what we're talking about. So let's start talking about, and, and like I said, this really could apply to any animal with a terminal diagnosis, but you're going to hear me say geriatric or senior in here a lot. And this does apply to both kitty cats and dogs. Um, and frankly, it could apply to horses. It could apply to people who are in kind of the same age category or uh, stage of life. So geriatric patients are often both chi and blood deficient. So chi is energy. So we get older, we slow down, we don't have as much energy. I know for me, if I have to lift 50 pound bags of horse grain, I'd much rather do it in the afternoon after I've gotten moving, my energy is flowing better, trying to lift those bags first thing in the morning, doesn't go so well. Um, and blood deficient means that they've lost sort of their, the richness to the blood. A lot of times they're anemic, their iron levels are low, their B vitamin levels are low. Um, but blood is also the cooling mechanism of the body. So for instance, when women go through menopause, our air conditioning is broken. That's why we have hot flashes and we're, we're hot all the time. Um, and so the same thing can happen to our pets as they get older, they, they kind of lose that air conditioning and the ability to circulate the blood as well. Those that have been fed dry kibble for many years are usually also yin deficient. So that's more cooling and moisturizing. Um, as weakness and deficiency progress, evil chi, which are, is the um, invaders, uh, will come in and the disease man process manifests as accumulation of phlegm and stagnation of chi and blood. So we're not, stagnation means it's not circulating as well. So the heart isn't working as well. Uh, the blood isn't flowing as well. Energy movement through the body is just not working as well as it used to. So that's how we get stag stagnation. When things stop flowing, there's a blockage and we get lumps and bumps and tumors shocking. So that's why old dogs tend to be very lumpy. Kitty cats can sometimes get lumpy, but they're, they don't get as lumpy as dogs do. And I remember the last Doberman that we had um, when my kids were little. Uh, one day we sat and started counting lumps and bumps on him. And this is before I knew anything about holistic medicine and he was being fed completely wrong. And he had over 80 lumps and bumps on him. You know, it was two small children and me counting. So Lord knows where that went. But anyway, that's a lot of lumps and bumps to have on a dog. Um, some patients will benefit from tonifying treatments, which are things that are going to help boost their system um, that supplement both chi and yin. So we're going to talk about how do we give them more energy? How do we bring cooling and moisturizing to the body? Um, but many will also have concurrent excesses or stagnations that we also have to deal with. So this is that whole balancing act. Yin and yang have to be in balance. So hot and cold, moist and dry have to be in balance. You can't have all of one or all of the other. And I just realized I wore black and white today, my yin and yang. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, they have to be in balance. And so we could have some things that are in excess. An excess would be something like liver chi stagnation. There's a lot of 
there's a lot of energy, but it's all stuck inside the liver. So now it becomes an excess, but the rest of the body might have deficiencies going on. Um, so we need to identify where they are and then figure out how we can manage them. Um, so the geriatric animal is usually deficient. Therefore, disease may be present with only mild external signs because the body can't mount a good fight against the disease. High fever, severe inflammation, and acute clinical signs are often not seen in the geriatric patient until the disease has progressed really far uh, because they just can't mount. So we talk a lot about the immune system being weak in very young animals and very old animals. Um, and that's why we have to make sure that we keep their immune system in the best shape that we can. So that's gonna be gut health. Um, bone marrow function. So really critical for these guys because they can't mount as big a defense. So we do need to about continually evaluate quality of life. And there are differences between breeds. Uh, some animals are going to be sort of um, just slower and more mellow throughout their entire life. So you may not notice that decline or deficiency um, in energy level as much. But you may have other breeds, Border Collies, Aussies, all the herding breeds who are very, very, very active. And then suddenly they're slowing down and you're like, wait a minute, this dog used to go 10 miles a day and now he doesn't want to go 20 feet. Um, so you have to evaluate it based on the history of your particular pet. And also uh, the breed can have differences. And the breed differences are also going to affect the age at when you start seeing the decline. I just read a great article today on where they studied uh, the age and breed differences, um, purebreds versus mixed breeds and what the average age is for when cancer is uh, diagnosed. And there are some significant differences across the board. Um, so you wanna be assessing heart rates, respiratory rates, posture, uh, changes in posture can be very significant, uh, indicating pain problems, appetite, vocalization, body weight, and in particular, mental state. And mental state is really critical to evaluate. Food therapy is vitally important in the geriatric patient, more so than in your typical average healthy animal. We can feed them pretty much crap for quite a few years and they'll do just fine, but it will catch up with them at some point. And so when we get into these debilitated states, that's when it is much more critical that we have um, really high quality food for them. Uh, the generally weakened state of the intestinal tract makes dry food an even more deplorable choice than usual. Primary food choices should always support digestion, which in um, Chinese medicine is the earth element, so spleen and stomach, and should be mostly neutral to slightly warming when we talk about the energetics of food. That's talked about a lot in my book, Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. We also have quite a few blogs on that because everything that we eat has its own energies and its own properties for what it does to the body. So foods that are deemed cold, or hot, so two extremes, pungent, salty, bitter, or sour should be a much smaller percentage of the diet and stick more with the neutral to slightly warming because most of these dogs, as they're losing muscle mass, they're losing body fat, do become colder. Um, so even if you have, for instance, a dog with Cushing's disease who is very yin deficient, hot, panting, as they progress in their disease, eventually they will become deficient and they will become cold. Um, fiber should be more soluble to ease digestion and foods that lead to st stagnation, so things like refined carbohydrates, kibble and cookie type things, and excess fats should be avoided. Keto may not be the best choice for these animals. I have had it work for cancer pets that are in um, progressive stages, but it doesn't work for all of them. And some of them just don't handle the fats very well. And if you've got liver issues going on, a lot of times they won't handle the fats very well. Um, cooked diets may be better than raw, although some animals with good digestive function may thrive on raw, which I've had very good luck with my animals surviving and thriving on raw late into their teens. Um, but that's not so for all of them. So you may have to modify things if they are starting to struggle digesting their raw food. And with raw food, make sure that it is served warm. Do not serve it cold, particularly to the seniors. Avoid soupy food because that may dampen the stomach fire and lead to phlegm formation. 
Uh, what age is considered senior in toy breeds like Pomeranians? Well, interesting. The article I read today gave seven across the board, uh, but start um, start looking for signs of cancer in the large breeds as young as four or five. Um, so I would say, um, you know, for this for the really tiny breeds, probably more like nine or ten, because we would. We would expect them to live to be 17 or 18. Unfortunately, we are not seeing that. We are seeing these animals dying at 10 to 12. So seven may be a good point to really start looking. All right, so basic geriatric diets might include turkey, beef, uh, grass-fed beef, salmon. Chicken can be okay if the animal is not too hot. Organ meat should be used regularly because it supplies vitamins that they're not going to get elsewhere. Um, carbohydrates, if you decide to use some, and a lot of times with these seniors, we need to use some carbs. This is where I sometimes will bend my rules um, with my really low carbs because sometimes we need them to maintain weight. Sometimes we need them for different properties that they supply. Sometimes we need to dilute the protein if the kidneys are starting to get in trouble. Um, so if you're going to use carbs, things that might uh, work well for these guys are millet, brown rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, yams, and winter squash, which would be things like butternut squash, acorn squash. Um, any grains, if you should choose to use them, they should be soaked overnight and cooked low and slow. So like in a slow cooker with enough water to make a well-cooked porridge, basically really uh, well digested. Um, oats are warming and they are a great cheat tonic. Um, so particularly for dogs with kidney disease uh, or yang deficiency, and I know people get freaked out about phosphorus levels, just soak your grains overnight and then uh, cook them well, you'll be fine. And you want to use a variety of colorful seasonal vegetables. I'm a huge fan of uh, covering the rainbow. Um, we'll come back to food a little later. All right, things like twina, which is uh, sort of a Chinese massage Cairo combo, uh, massage, reiki, um, T-touch, uh, craniosacral work will enhance circulation and restore, help restore function. Apply warmth first. So like a towel out of the dryer, um, a, a warm pack that's not too hot, um, uh, over the muscle area where you want to massage. So we allow the muscles to warm up. That's applying some, getting the, the blood flowing. So we're decreasing stagnation, bringing blood flow to the area. And then you can do the massage that you want to do. Let the animal choose um, what pressure they want. If they are pushing into you, they want you to massage harder. If they are pulling away or kind of, uh, uh, then they want less pressure. So go with a lighter touch. So always start light and then work your way up and see what they like. If they don't get up and leave and they're kind of going, ah, then it's great. If they go, mm -mm, and if they're mobile and they're getting up to leave, either the pressure's too, too heavy or they've got too much pain in that area and they just can't tolerate it. Cognitive function declines due to lack of adequate nutrients. Um, so we have talked about this a little bit over the week, but things that we really want to make sure, uh, oh, that's my mom's dog, Shotzi, who is uh, 17 and a half in that picture, um, or a 50 pound dog, 17 and a half. Uh, so omega-3s. So whether you use a fish oil, this is a salmon oil, or whether you use phytoplankton, microalgae, where uh, calamari, krill, wherever you're getting your omega-3s, absolutely get omega-3s on board for these guys. CoQ10, I think, is critical for seniors because we all make it when we're young, but as we age, we don't do it as well. And CoQ10 or ubiquinol, it's the same thing, uh, are very, very important in the ATP cycle. If you remember that from high school biology or chemistry, um, the APT cycle is the energy cycle. And so we need critical nutrients for that. Another um, really good one is SAM-E, which is really good for uh, supporting liver function, but also brain function. So we like to use those for our seniors. Um, something else that is really critical is vitamin D. All Dogs and cats should have their vitamin D levels tested and then supplement with vitamin D3 made specifically for pets. Do not use human products. They are too strong and you will kill them. Um, but find out how much vitamin D they have in their system. Find out if they need more. And if they do, then supplement appropriately because animals with heart disease, animals with um, cognitive dysfunction, animals with cancer almost always are going to be low in vitamin D. So really critical. 
Uh, what doses for the CoQ10? Five to 10 milligrams per pound of body weight twice a day. Let's see. So cognitive function declines due to lack of adequate nutrients, uh, deterioration of cellular function, decrease blood flow to the brain, and lack of use. So if we are not stimulating them mentally, um, then the brain is going to atrophy. Just like if we don't use our arm muscles for a long time, our muscles shrink. Uh, if we don't walk, our leg muscles will shrink. So we want to stimulate their brain. So interactive games. Um, these are just a couple of them. And you can use these for kitty cats as well. I know it says dog tornado and I know it says dog treat maze, um, but you can use these for either. We also have a little kitty cat, like a weeble that doesn't, that wobbles and doesn't fall down, that dispenses treats they can bat around as well. But those are the kind of things that we want to keep the mental stimulation, mental engagement, get them outside, whether that's in a stroller, a backpack, walking, however you can, you know, let them take their little sniffari and have a good time. Um, physical exercise is critical for neuromuscular integrity and to maintain muscle mass, joint function, and nerve stimulation. Walking stimulates peristalsis, which is the digestive function. When they're moving, it stimulates the guts to work and digest and absorb nutrients and get things going through the guts. Um, so if they need help, you can use things like, uh, boots with grippy bottoms. You can use toe grips, paw friction, which is a thing that, uh, it's like a pulverized rubber that actually glues on the bottom of their pads, slings, carts, strollers, whatever it takes to get these guys out and moving. Uh, sunshine is important for external yang because yang is the warmth and the sunshine, uh, and it's necessary for cognitive stimulation. So we need some sunshine. Education of the caretaker is critical in treating the special needs of an elderly pet or a, a pet who's facing the end of life. Animals may experience an improved quality of life even if they initially present with problems that typically result in euthanasia in conventional, conventional veterinary practice. There are so many things that we can do, and that is why we made the um, Integrative Approach to Hospice and Palliative Care course, because we feel that if more caretakers could learn what could be done as far as supplementation, um, mo mobility support, cognitive support, we really feel like a lot of animals would get a lot more months and years of high quality added on to the end of their life um, rather than just facing euthanasia. And it is amazing the differences that we have seen. Caretakers can actively participate in their pet's care and can apply the lifestyle changes to younger pets as well to smooth their transitions into the senior years. Um, Tweenom, massage, chiropractic, dietary improvements, and regular exercise are every bit as integral to treatment as therapies given at the clinic. So learning to do these things at home is uh, pretty critical. The geriatric kidney patient experiences the same problems facing a younger animal, but there's often less reserve or jing, which is your life essence, for compensation. So like I said, we can feed crap, we can ignore them, not give them exercise. They'll do great for years. And then when it falls apart, it falls apart really bad. And sort of like uh, we were talking yesterday and Gwen said that one of her friend's um, young child broke their arm and within three weeks it was completely healed. If I break my arm right now, it's not going to be a few weeks. It's going to probably be a few months. We don't heal well when we're old. We don't have that reserve. Um, so the weakening of the kidneys is directly related to the aging process. And the kidneys are where your life essence is stored. So humans are born, according to Chinese medicine, with 100 years of life. If we take really good care of ourselves, we don't do anything to excess. We do everything, um, you know, we don't have deficiencies. We don't have excesses. We eat a good diet. We exercise all the things we're supposed to do. We all know what those are. We just don't do them. Uh, we'll get 100 years. And if you're really good, you'll get more than 100 years because you didn't use everything up yet. And so what we're seeing, because we have been doing things wrong with our pets, with chemicals and vaccines and food, um, we end up with these deficiencies much earlier, which is why now the average life expectancy for dogs and cats is 10 to 12. Not good. Not good. We want it to be 20 and 30. Uh, as the kidneys age, the animal becomes white haired and the coat loses its magnificence. Um, there's a close correlation between lungs and kidneys, and the lungs are actually responsible for the hair coat um, and also the pores in the skin. 
Uh, the vision and hearing are muted and the pelvic limbs become stooped and weak uh, because the hind end is ruled by the kidney function. So as the kidney function decreases, the hind end decreases and hearing decreases. Uh, the kidneys are responsible for hearing. Um, there is lumbar weakness and mental inconsistency with a reduction in the will, which is housed in the kidneys. So the will to move, the will to live, the will to do anything is housed in your kidneys. Uh, so to preserve Jing or the life essence, one needs to strengthen the spleen stomach, which is digestion through appropriate diet and proper absorption of food. So we talked the other day about using digestive enzymes, probiotics, prebiotics uh, to help them with that and feeding the food that is maybe partially digested instead of raw at this point. But it, again, that's gonna depend on the individual. Um, and equally transportation and transformation of food depends on the smooth flow of liver chi and sufficient function of the lungs which distribute the food energy. Um, so we see, and we have a blog on this as well, uh, hind limb tremors in older dogs, and it's a chi deficiency. It's an energy deficiency. It's sort of like if you were to hold something heavy up over your head and stand there for 20 minutes, half hour, depends on your strength. At some point, you will become deficient in chi and your arm will start to shake. And so we see this in animals as they age. Our little 15-year-old Georgie, oh, I should have gotten a video of that. Uh, Georgie, we jokingly say has Parkinson's disease because he will stand and just all four legs are tremoring. Um, sometimes it's after he's gone out for a long walk. Sometimes it's after he's gone out and wandered around the yard for a while. Sometimes he's just standing there and he's got tremors. So, um, Okay, congestive heart failure is a common finding in older animals and TCVM is very useful regardless of what caused it. Valvular disease is primarily represented in elderly dogs. So we see mitral valve disease, uh, that's for heart disease that we see um, in dogs, about 75% of it is mitral valve disease and then a much smaller percentage is dilated cardiomyopathy and then some other weirdos. Uh, for cats, we see um, dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, valvular disease is primarily represented in elderly dogs while cats tend to suffer from restrictive or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, aging and dental disease play strong roles in heart disease uh, for dogs and for cats, uh, dental disease um, uh, and underlying kidney and thyroid disease are uh, huge problems uh, contributing to heart failure in kitty cats. Um, so herbal th therapy can strengthen the heart function enough that conventional drug doses may need to be lowered or even discontinued. So I just grabbed a couple. Um, formula CV by RX Vitamins is one of the cardiovascular formulas. This one has Hawthorne, carnitine, taurine, vitamin E, DMG, magnesium, potassium, uh, and some mushrooms and selenium. Oops, sorry. Uh, so that is one that we could use. We also have the five leaf uh, botanical. I didn't grab everything that's in their uh, program, but they do have Hawthorne and a heart tonic. So these have good chi tonics in them to help with circulation. Uh, part of the protocol is to help with building blood as well. Um, so dietary therapy and acupuncture can also play a very large role in normalizing heart function. It's important to schedule reevaluation of EKG, blood pressure, and echocardiogram periodically if you have an animal de dealing with that. Um, ah, the Shen, which is uh, sort of brain function attitude, uh, is intimately tied to the heart. So animals with heart failure often have concurrent cognitive dysfunction especially if there's a yin or blood deficiency. Signs of uh, the cognitive dysfunction could include excessive vocalization, inappropriate urination or defecation, restless nights, wandering, confusion, um, howling or barking at night. Um, and we do have a blog on cognitive dysfunction and uh, how to choose the appropriate herbs for that. Um, so I talked a little bit about oatmeal. I said I was gonna come back to that. Oatmeal for breakfast tonifies chi and has great restorative properties for the nervous system and gastrointestinal tract. Uh, my grandma used to say a bowl of warm oatmeal was what we had to have every morning before we headed out to school because that was going to stick to our ribs and give us the energy that we needed for our brain to function at school. Well, grandma was right because 
huh, how about that? It has great restorative properties for the nervous system. Your brain is your nervous system. Um, and I do find that particularly animals that are young deficient, those old, cold animals, cats, not as much, but sometimes cats will go for this as well. A warm bowl of oatmeal. If, if you have an animal who's slow to get going in the morning, they want to stay in bed. Um, these are the animals that don't want to get up till 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. They don't want to eat breakfast. They don't have the energy for that. They're, they're kind of like, yeah, maybe by one o'clock in the afternoon, I'll be ready to eat something. It's because they have to wake up and get their chi flowing. They have to warm up. They have to move around. Um, their digestive function can't work until they get all that going. Um, so we see this particularly with old women um, who become um, old and cold. Like my mother wears a sweater when it's 80 degrees out. <laughs> I guess I'm getting there. Um, but warm oatmeal is great. So we see a lot of older people who don't want to get up at seven o'clock in the morning anymore. They, they want to sleep in till nine or 10. Um, and then that bowl of oatmeal will get them going. So for a lot of my dogs in particular in kidney failure, my patients, I would just tell people, hey, let's give them a warm bowl of oatmeal in the morning. We're going to add a little bit of cinnamon because that's warming. You could add a little bit of ginger. We can put some berries in there for their antioxidant. And if we need something flavored a little bit, you could put a little sardine or a little bit of egg, something to make it taste more like what they would normally eat. But that can be really good for getting them going. Um, foods that promote phlegm should be avoided. Dairy products and peanut butter are included in that. I do not recommend peanut butter, period anyway, for a lot of reasons. But if you need to use a nut butter, please use almond butter and make sure it has no additives in it. Um, let's see, we can supplement with beef, sardines, wild caught salmon, cabbage, and asparagus are very good to tonify chi. Um, stagnation usually follows a deficiency in the, in the elderly. That's because they have deficient circulation, they have blood deficiency, they have chi deficiency. So then we get stagnation because things aren't moving like they should. Um, so food should be chosen to tonify chi, blood, and or yin. The foods can be seasoned with small amounts of turmeric. We talk about using turmeric, golden paste, something like that a lot with these guys, rosemary and basil. Cayenne pepper can also be used. Um, other foods to supplement for stagnation include hawthorn. So we talked about that with um, our herbal. Uh, you can use berries, flowers, or leaves to move stagnant blood and move food from the stomach, especially of fatty, meaty foods. Um, it's very beneficial for elderly patients with compromised digestion, digestion, and I love ginger for that. Ginger is really good. So ginger tea, ginger cookies, little uh, fresh ginger grated in the food. Um, I use ginger in a lot of my recipes because I love it. Um, it's also a good source of manganese. Um, it's always important to include some blood tonics, beef, liver, dates, love dates, egg yolks, and dark leafy greens. Um, so we've got bison green from Green Juju has um, bison heart, bison liver, both great blood tonics, organic kale, nice dark leafy green, dandelion greens, dark leafy green, kelp, dark leafy green sort of, um, but it's very good for circulation. Um, so something like that is a great treat for these guys. Um, uh, when blood stagnation exists in the face of blood deficiency, there must be adequate blood present in order to move the blood. Uh, foods that promote damp should be avoided. Dairy, peanut butter, and heavy meats. I'm not a huge fan of lamb unless you can get really lean lamb. Um, I am a fan of lean pork and I don't have a problem with beef for these guys as long as it is grass fed. It's going to be leaner and healthier for them. Um, like I said, uh, real heavy fats for these guys, like the keto diets, it could be very difficult for them to, uh, to process. Stroke, collapse, and debility are classified as, oh, this is where we should use that video, as Way syndrome in TCBM, W-E-I, Way syndrome. An animal with Way syndrome presents with weakness of tendons and ligaments, flaccid muscles, atrophied muscles, numbness, and diminished or failed ability to walk or rise. We see this so often in old dogs, old cats. It's usually secondary to spleen chi deficiency, which is digestive energy. Um, so we have, uh, and we see spleen chi deficiency just from aging in general, but also poor diet. If they've been on a poor diet most of their life, chronic use of drugs and chemicals and vaccines, that's going to contribute to it as well. Um, kidney jing deficiency, 
which is that life essence deficiency, aging, chronic illness, and poor de diet deplete the jing. The kidney jing then fails to nourish the bones, leading to limb and lumbar weakness and eventually collapse. Liver, blood, and yin deficiency from poor diet, stress, frustra frustration, deficiency of kidney yin, and overuse of drugs can lead to the liver, blood, and yin deficiency. Um, so this is a really good time for chicken soup. Again, my grandma used to say, if you're sick, you need a good bowl of warm chicken soup. So to your chicken soup that you're going to make for your pets, you're going to add thyme, really good herb for them, a little sweet potato, celery, which is draining and going to get rid of damp, parsley also drains damp, but it's also a dark leafy green, a little brown rice or oats, and cook it in bone broth in your slow cooker and make a really nice chicken soup for these guys and avoid cold foods for these guys. Um, pain in the elderly is common and insidious. Strong herbal formulas and acupuncture treatments should be used very sparingly um, and only when gentler treatments are ineffective. So you may be taking your senior or debilitated animal for acupuncture. This is a time when we might only use two to six acupuncture needles, whereas in a young, hardy animal, um, we might use, I, I've used up to 60 needles at a time. Um, so it just depends. I use 60 needles on my Doberman when his wobbler syndrome paralyzed him and I needed him. He was a young dog and I needed him to get up and get walking. It worked. NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that I'm not a huge fan of, are energetically cold. So one more reason besides, you know, damaging liver function, kidney function, causing GI distress, um, we should avoid them in cold animals. And they're probably not going to help that much with arthritis if you have a cold animal. We want to look for warming things. So we might look for something like an herbal formula, like the DGP has um, boswellia and turmeric, which are warming. So they're going to help when we have that cold arthritis. Those kind of herbs are going to help more. Um, and we also want to decrease or uh, moderate inflammation. And so I really like the one TDC for that one TDC also is very good for dental issues. Um, so let's see if the NSAIDs cause GI upset, it's either because their coldness overacted on an already weakened digestive system, which is spleen stomach, or because they cause damage. And now that has to be repaired. Most geriatrics do have some degree of pain. Stagnation should be treated with acupuncture, herbs, and diet. Um, we want to use tonifying foods and herbs along with chi movers and blood invigorating herbs and food. Lean meats, white fish, dark leafy greens, basil, coriander, turmeric, hawthorn berries, ginger, and well-cooked brown rice can be helpful. Avoid fatty meats, damp foods, dry kibble, dairy, and peanut butter. The disharmony seen in elderly patients often seem extreme and hopeless. Caretakers present animals that have been diagnosed as terminal, end stage, and chronic. However, TCVM provides the tools for these animals to be sent home as simply geriatric. If we can take an animal who is in a crisis or acute situation and we can just dial it back to chronic, we've done a great job and we've got an animal who has and improved quality of life. And we may be able to then have enough time to get things dialed back to where we can get months to years with these animals. Can't do it with every one of them. And we talked, we've talked over the week about the criteria that we use uh, to decide whether we need to go directly to euthanasia versus natural death. And we've talked about things that we can do to help support them. And that's, again, why we made this course. We want people to understand there's so much that you can do to support these animals, so much that we can do to support these animals, dial them back from death's doorstep to, okay, I got this, I can handle this. And I can tell you that this works based on the dogs. I mean, it works for cats too, um, but based on the dogs at Monkey's House that have come in with life ending diagnosis where they were gonna be put down and they were given days to weeks to live. And some of those dogs are there living an incredible life for two to five years. That's a huge difference. If I, if I knew that by doing some work, changing diet, adding herbs, adding supplements, doing things for mental stimulation, um, if I knew that I could get even two more months, but frankly, two years, 
I'd be all over that. I would be all over that. I want my animals with me for as long as possible. We lose them way too early and they suffer from way too much chronic disease, inflammatory problems. And a lot of that has been of our making because we have trusted big pharma. We have trusted the big pet food companies. And we are now discovering that we need to dial that back and we need to say, you know what? I don't need to be giving these chemicals every month. I don't need to feed this highly processed, horrid ingredient food. I can, I can figure out how to get real food in my pet's bowl. I can figure out how to keep parasites away without using a bunch of pesticides in and on my animal. I know that I don't need these vaccines every year. I know that my animal's protected. I know there are ways around these things. That's what we are trying to empower you to understand. And I want, I want your dogs with you for 20 years. I want your cats with you for 30 years. When we have Great Danes living a good life until 16, that's amazing. That is amazing. But it's far too common to lose them at five to seven. And part of that is genetics. Part of that with heart disease and I mean, Doberman's, the dilated cardiomyopathy in those two breeds, the boxers, it's a huge problem. And so we need breeders to be responsible and step up and screen their dogs and uh, really be responsible about how how we're breeding and the puppies that we're turning out and the kittens that we're turning out, the rag dolls, the Maine Coons, we've got huge heart problems in those breeds. Um, in the Oriental cat breeds, we have a lot of problems with kidney disease. So, um, you know, it's really up to breeders and it's up to us when we're getting animals to take, take time, if at all possible. I mean, I do rescue, so Lord knows what, what their background is. But if you're going out to purchase a cat or a dog and you're going through a breeder, make sure that breeder has been doing the work to make the breed better and not just pairing willy nilly. It's pretty critical. Um, and that's how we're gonna improve the genetics and hopefully people don't have to suffer the heartbreak of losing their animals at a very, very young age. I hope this week has been helpful for everyone. Check out the course. Even if you decide you're not ready for the course, you might want to just go to the website and read about everything that is offered in there. Uh, it may, that alone may send you down some rabbit holes of doing some research on your own and um, helping your pets by being able to support them better. So that's my goal.